This is a story of a community, a farm, a volunteer fire department, and one crazy-ass redneck fundraiser that ties them all together. This is this is a family family thing. We began with my father was the same way. He, he was quite, which I think that's nothing more than what you should do. That's, you know. So I was born over in Starksboro, and then. I, we came here in 1929, I believe it was 29 or 30, during the Depression, and my folks bought, bought this place here. But we were better off in the farm than, than people were in the city. My father took it over, and uh, I'm in partnership with him. Um, he's 92, he still works every day um, on the farm. He scrapes the barn, and uh, he uh, does welding for us and rebuilds starters and stuff and he's a very big asset for us. It's a dairy farm. Uh, we've got 970 acres total. We've got 450 or only 450 are tillable so we've got a lot of woodland and stuff and we run about 140 milking cows and we grow enough feed for them and my oldest son Curtis he's interested in farming also. He'll be the fourth generation. I was brought up at, on the farm, and growing up in that I had to have a lot of values taught to me. The most important thing was right and wrong, and, and be be honest and uh, dependable. I mean that, that that's that's what that's about what uh, everyone aspires to do. You know, my grandfather always said, if you, if you have to be paid for everything you do, you're not worth all that much. And if, if somebody needs help, then you help them, and someday you'll need help, and they'll help you. And Anybody needed anything, they would go to Roger Lane. Roger Lane would know where to get it if he couldn't make it or fix it. Um, and I think it's still that way with David and, and Curtis. They know that, you know, it's an inherited gene, and they can make just about anything. Roger is amazing. Roger will take the time to talk with anyone. It never feels like he's being um, bothered. You could stop by at any time. He'll stop whatever he's doing, but he always has a story to share. And he enjoys sharing the knowledge he has about what it's like to work hard, value what you have, that ability to want to help out at any time. Oh, I know. He's really involved in field days and, and he has more antiques than I think most people even begin to know. Roger may be one of the most amazing, interesting men alive today. That's how I would describe him. And with his history of what he's been through in the war and his whole history of how many years he's been farming and the fact that he's still very active in everything and very healthy and just he just represents the old-fashioned uh, farmer, and yet, you know, he's so incredibly smart and, and innovative in all that he's done as far as uh, the man can do anything. He's given me a lot of advice through the years, and uh, like they say, 
The older your father gets, the smarter he gets. <laughs> And we came outside the building and it was extremely hot to the point that you know you, you couldn't you couldn't put look at it and we went over there and we picked up the kids toys that were close to the building and moved them and moved them over by the garage where they wouldn't melt or wouldn't, nothing would happen to them. I remember a little kid and he says hey mister thanks for saving my truck you know it just as if you, all you thought was let's let's see if we could save the toy but at the end of the day that's all he had everything else was gone that's all he had well, I think we cannot ever live without a fire department. And I think if you're any one of the people or even know someone who's needed them, then you really learn to appreciate why, why we need them. It's just wonderful, all the people who have volunteered to be a fireman because nobody's getting paid to do that. And uh, so everything they do for the community is out of the goodness of their heart. Um, I joined in 77, the department formed in 73. Uh, I've been all different stages of officers and like I say, I'm chief now. My son, he's one of the assistant chiefs. He was a junior member when he joined and uh, he's worked up through the ranks also. It's always tough in a small town because you know everybody. And when you, when you, when you know everybody, the likelihood of, of coming across an incident where it involves friends and family is much higher. Uh, so, and every day she went by the same time going to work or dropping uh, her kids up off to daycare. I remember he used to always wave to me out the back seat. Uh, and I knew, I, knew, I knew, you know, who she was. Didn't go to school with her or anything. And I remember when we got there, you, you, you could recognize the car and know, and know who it is per se and it didn't look all that bad then we got up there and you know and she was, had passed and you know and but it, it's hard the the fact of of her isn't as hard as now she's got a little kid who just wants to see his mom and how do you tell a young child that his mother's passed away and then we all know the family and you know until now the, you know we've it, it's it's hard, and we, you know, the state police went up and talked to them, and so that, you know, for the most part, that's that. The first thing that happened was my daughter was killed in a car accident, and seven weeks later, Rick was killed in a construction accident. Actually, from the time that my daughter died, we started raising my two grandsons, and so after he passed, then, then I continued to, to raise them. I was married to a great man, and uh, um, he loved that fire department. I don't know, it just was really special to him. And the fire department has carried on the same, you know, since he's been gone, and, um, you know, they, they're still doing amazing things. This community was was amazing, um, you know, in that they continued to support me here on the farm. It's hard for me to describe just just what it's meant, but but everybody has done everything they could to to help me along the way because they knew it was going to be be tough. That everyone just rallied behind and supported her in any way that she would need to help with her grandsons, who she now is diligently working so hard 
to bring up her grandchildren who are two sons that currently work with her on the farm as well. And they would do, take their shirt off their back, they would do anything to help her out. What the community has done for me is uh, they've really pitched in to help out, actually to help raise the boys. So many people have volunteered to take the boys to things when they knew that I couldn't be in two places at once when I'm doing farmer's markets or um, just having to be out working. I mean, you really feel like this is a special, uh, special place to live when you know that people care about you that much. And that's definitely the way this town makes you feel. Um, of course, I've never lived anywhere else. You know, I've, I was born and raised here and really have no intention of leaving. I've lived in this town since um, I moved in in 75. And I work in South Burlington and I just love it when I come home. It's, I get out of the noise and it's just nice. And there's a, there's a sense of community that you don't find in a lot of other places. And I can really say that because we have lived in a lot of other places. We've lived in many, many places, nice places. Um, but the small town, the community is really, really important. The open space, the air, the, the scenery, the farm life is really important to me. And this, this is just, it's been a good, a good experience on the fire department. You meet people that um, have done all kinds of different jobs and all kinds of different beliefs and everybody gets together for a common cause and everybody wants to help any way they can. Some are more able than others, but everybody's got the same heart. To be able to serve a small community in any capacity that the fire department can, can serve, whether it's one of our own town folks that's in an unfortunate accident or something simple as a, a little brush fire that gets away. Uh, to be able to go and put it out before, you know, something major happens, it's, it's, it's quite honorable to be here. The commitment is 24-7 because they're always on call. Um, always have a radio on them. They're up in the night, need be. Um, one of them will come back because chores have to be done. Somebody will stay, somebody will come back. Our town is very supportive of the fire department. I don't think they've ever not given them the budget that they have requested, um, but they try to keep it to a minimum so that it doesn't raise taxes. So they want to do some fundraising so they can get keep their equipment up, um, their gear, and they want to be able to to make sure that they're on top of their training. For your bunker gear, which is our protective clothing, you're talking pretty close to 2,000 per person. Um, and it has to be rotated out periodically because it just wears out and uh, it's not safe to be interior. It's very significant, um, the money we raise. When we buy turnout gear, pieces of apparatus, we need hoses, we need fittings, we need axes, we need radios, pagers, any of this stuff. The majority of the community is happy to see that we're making an effort to, to lighten the burden on the taxpayers. Their biggest fundraiser that the fire department has is the mud bog. Um, it's growing each year. It takes place on our, on our farm, just off the mountain road, way out in the field. And, and a lot of people volunteer, a lot of people volunteer to help out. Uh, pretty much the whole department will show up and work that day. It's amazing the people that come out that you wouldn't expect to come out. It's amazing the people that participate and say great things about it. As a community member who knows a fair amount of people in town, when you're there and you see people that really don't, don't understand or even maybe not even like four-wheelers or mud trucks or whatnot, but there, well, we're gonna come in, we're gonna watch, we're gonna eat some food and we're gonna help out. We cleared 10,000 last year, which is our biggest year yet. The uh, big boost was the Heritage mud truck and they ran it in the mud bog and then they raffled it off. And now with Heritage coming down, it's great to know that they recognize our fundraising efforts. I think it's a great fit for their business. Being able to work almost as a, as a partner trying to make it all come together for us is, is just wonderful. You gotta try it. You, everybody's got to go to a mud bog once in their life. <laughs> and uh, I guarantee you 50% of them are going to be back 
and probably another 20% are going to be building one. <laughs> Go H-Team! Thank you H-Team, see you at the mud bog. The Moncton Volunteer Fire Department is in need of upgraded equipment. A new addition to the firehouse and funds to repave their lot. If you'd like to help the H-Team support the cause, visit morelovemoncton.com. So Alex gets going, it was mostly water. So Alex gets going, backs up, gets going probably 30, 40 miles an hour. It and he seemed set... like a lot faster than that. <laughs> <laughs> seemed like fast enough. And he claimed his dirt bike would stay right on top and go across the water. Well, it looked like a tidal wave with a helmet in the middle. <laughs>